Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fiscus Friday. It is Friday, March 18th. So thrilled for this Fiscus Friday. And I think afterward, everyone will definitely know why we feel the way we do, uh, why we are excited. Uh, we have some amazing, not only announcements, but we have some stellar, stellar individuals here with us. Uh, so we're going to start with that, and then we will get into the announcements. Uh, one element that everybody obviously is watching these days is is oil and gas, right? It seems to be one of the most watched markets in the off-chain world right now with what's, you know, it, it impacts us all. Um, and then also on-chain as, as we see these uh, elevated gas prices. Uh, we have the honor today. Uh, Princess is bringing two project developers. These are the developers. These are not these are not stand-ins. These are them uh, that have solutions for this industry, not just now, but into the future. And we're not talking about just the crypto future, which is right next week, next month, but we're actually talking about into the future. So thrilled and honored. And with that, we'll turn it over to Princess. Fantastic. Happy Fiscus Friday, y'all. Uh, this world and this community never ceases to amaze me. I was just sharing with Phil this week that this work sends me beyond the moon some days and other days feeds me humble pie. This week has been quite intense off chain as we um, are meeting with legal teams from various companies considering uh, the Fiscus funds as part of their next funding strategy, as well as bankers who are not, um, who are in not so many words, wondering why they're not able to offer a lending product as transparent and as approachable as Fiscus funds. And um, they, they're really curious about our structures, of course, because we're changing, um, changing the, the thinking and being in the, uh, the actual decentralized space actually uh, has them wondering, and actually has had some bankers saying to me, um, geez, uh, let me know when you're hiring. I'd love to actually um, join you in this uh, decentralized future. So um, as I've mentioned before, it's in these days leading up to distribution of funding that are the most delicate and sensitive to project owners, bankers, lawyers, as we follow through on the commitments off chain and retrieving the uh, definitive documents that really cement these deals. Um, I've had several people from the community contact me, uh, continuing to ask for more, you know, clarity on some of the off-chain um, experiences and um, outside of what I can share um, from the, the uh, non-NDA space. It's really, it's about the relationships. Um, we've signed on some uh, more amazing project developers, and I'm so excited to finally actually bring some uh, project developers that are uh, talking our same language. Um, it's really this intersection between well, what, what I look at is uh, the ESG impact investing world as it um, intersects with the uh, on-chain crypto dynamics and, and that world. Um, so um, I just want to share with you that we're going to be really hearing some um, quite uh, technical details of how we're entering that, that field, not just in a, a domestic environment, but actually in an international um, and global environment. And more and more, uh, we are learning that uh, Fiscus Dow, the experience itself, um, has really been um, an, an amazing opportunity for these project developers and others to um, really learn about what we're doing. Most uh, of the project developers are newbies, not only to Discord, but also um, uh, new to the whole idea of the token marketplace. So I want to give special thanks to those in the community who have aided and given their time to support uh, the growing learning community that we have here. So without further ado, um, I want to jump in and introduce uh, two project developers um, uh, that are uh, joining us today. Um, first up, um, we actually were trying to get Greg to join us last time. I'm glad to see that he's here today. So I'll just give a brief um, introduction, Greg, and then um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start uh, asking some questions of you. And we also have um, another partner who's joining us as well. And as soon as he, um, I see him in the room, we will go ahead and jump in there. And then I'd like to have a cross-section conversation because these two project developers really are answering the world's um, toughest questions right now. How do we, um, you know, uh, take advantage of the fact that we do still need fossil fuels to kind of keep ourselves energized um, in the world. But at the same time, how do we flip the switch like some countries have already demonstrated and nations have demonstrated 
Um, and then at the same time, uh, you know, how do we um, involve ourselves in the ESG market and also um, en engage ourselves on the on-chain or blockchain um, experience when, you know, you and I both see that gas prices are, are surging within these community, uh, within these uh, experiences of just, you know, moving from one exchange to another. Um, so I think that both of these project developers have a good sense of not only the, the oil and gas arena, but also how it impacts the, um, the crypto space. So before I, I, I go further, let me just go ahead and read a brief, um, kind of remind us of the brief introduction that I gave last time to R3 Renew. And then, Greg, uh, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. So Thank you. R3, yep, R3 Renew is a hydrogen-based uh, renewable energy company that believes water holds the key to solving many of the world's energy problems. Water can be found in almost every aspect of day-to-day -day life. The amount of wastewater we create is staggering. The answer to solving many waste issues is to go upstream and treat and repurpose the stream to emit less by modifying current technologies that address the waste emissions and water problems. We use these technologies as a source to fund operations. The paradigm needs to shift to provide actual validated and verified reductions that impact the emission stream. These allowances and credits allow corporations to continue to pollute at the same levels. We will participate in these programs as we uh, provide solutions that eliminate waste, provide energy, and produce renewable fuels to displace gasoline and diesel. How we process this will act as a key to unlock the future to alternative net zero fuels. Many experts believe that the only way to achieve decarbonization is through hydrogen. Typical wastewater, excuse me, typical uh, wastewater projects include um, sanitary, agriculture, uh, produce, food, and industrial streams. So, Greg, I would love to um, have you uh, join us uh, in our conversation today by asking you if you could just share a brief overview of, the, of R3 Renew, its project, and your specific role. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And again, we see this, obviously, as an opportunity um, not only to be a part of innovative uh, strategic financing, but also to deploy innovative technology. And what you just described, and and, and prior to to the uh, write up that you that you read, you, you hit on something that's the flip a switch. And transitional energy is a key that we have focused on and feel is the crux and the tipping point to how we do get to this next, let's call it generation. We are going to experience uh, renewable energy is evolutionary. It's not revolutionary. We have to systematically make these improvements within our fuel selections that we have. Now, you know, we see um, domestic energy as probably one of the most important things that we have staring us in the face right now. Obviously, you can't turn on the news without hearing about crude prices and oil and who's got this and that. The thing that's incredible to us, and we, I'm going to reference May of 2020, uh, you saw crude prices go to minus 37 a barrel on futures. And you asked the question, what happened? What happened is the available storage to store very valuable refined fuel had wastewater in it. We simply have such a wastewater problem that it is pervasive in it produced water in refineries. It's agricultural residue and, and sludge in uh, your swine and your rendering and poultry. It, it is pervasive. And we as humans, we don't get up without making waste. And we see the opportunity to take that waste as a feedstock in a stream and actually convert that into usable power and energy. And, and it takes a debt expense when a guy, like, for example, I'll go really quickly and try not to get too sidetracked. We have a client that with this produced water problem invited us to their, their refinery. And, you know, we, we started talking about different solutions. And, and one of the things was, well, you know, we can convert this wastewater and actually turn it into energy. And they said, wow, boy, that's unbelievable. But really, we just want to get rid of the water. And they are so desperate for this storage space that we saw a fantastic opportunity. But as we started researching other oil and gas opportunities, we realized that our electrokinetic technology that we use above the ground, uh, we found a partner that actually has figured out how to use it below ground. And so 
using fluid dynamics through electrokinetics, we are actually able to manipulate uh, water and, and oil underground without fracking. And fracking takes about 4 million gallons per wellhead per year to frack one wellhead. We can eliminate that massive amount of wastewater or water that will be put in and then become produced water because it, it does come out. And, you know, one thing I want to share that, that's interesting is we have more water below the earth than we do above the earth. Now, if you really think about that, and most of you are probably around a, a body of water right now or can see a body of water, if you think about all the water that you see on the earth and, and triple that and then put it under the ground, that's what we have. Now, wh why that's important is because anything that we mine, any kind of drilling, we're going to have a water component. Water is everywhere. Now, again, I want to get back to the shallow oil well recovery. And it is amazing how many barrels, billions of barrels of oil are in shallow oil wells because the major companies who can spend 20 million in CapEx, they want to drill down to 15,000 feet and get a thousand barrels a day. All of the shallow oil has been neglected and we see just a tremendous opportunity. And I'll, I'll stop so you can ask me a question because I can keep going. Yes. Uh, so, Greg, can you tell us a little bit about your role? I know that we were working with a, um, a, an incredible technologist in uh, Croatia um, at uh, R3 Renew, but I'm sure with us your role in terms of how uh, it will impact the North American experience. Well, um, I, I, I do have a little bit of an interesting background as I was in financial services and suffered the 2008 crash with the CMBS world. And I started looking at different um, different opportunities, if you will, that um, at the time Obama had a very, uh, what we thought was going to be a pretty solid cap and trade program that uh, obviously a little political capital went to the healthcare, which is understandable, but still it got me going down a path of really looking at how these credit markets are set up and how, how truly it, it, it's kind of, it doesn't make sense because we're, we're essentially creating credits for these fine renewable projects that are going to create the, you know, offset um, emissions. But those credits are still going to the same to, I mean, they're, you're still polluting. It's a business as usual situation that somebody over here is buying, you know, something that was created by a viable, good renewable project. So it kind of, it didn't seem to make sense. So we started looking for upstream solutions. And you know, one thing that I do want to mention and, and our commitment is looking at rural opportunities. And the reason I say that is because many of these agricultural uh, operations are in rural areas, but the rural people are the last ones to get the, the, the renewable technology. And it is a perfect place. We call our, our setups renewable utilities because we can actually go, let's call it a chicken farm. We can go to a poultry processing plant and we can set up a facility that takes the wastewater we use electrolysis we separate the water and we create a hydrogen product that then we can make a natural gas now adding co2 to h2 actually makes a ch4 that's much easier to transport and we believe and it's already being done that the way the hydrogen fuel network will grow will be through the current infrastructure of the natural gas pipelines, but it'll be extracted downstream through membranes that we can actually extract the hydrogen. And again, the, we are on the cusp of, of a hydrogen economy because you look at California, California's got about 110 fueling stations. So we see a massive growth opportunity to not only uh, provide hydrogen, as a as a net zero fuel but we have this fabulous opportunity to treat waste while we're doing it so it, it is a multi-tier you're eliminating a problem you're taking a debt expense you're creating revenue and we see again getting back to the fossil fuel and working in oil and gas we see as that that is a transition to get us through this generational growth that we've got to get to that will finally and and there is a solution at the end of the day we think the water will be a bigger problem and the need for water 
than we actually will see with power. Because power, we, we will figure out pl- some of the plasma things that they're currently working on are amazing. And, and it's just a matter of time. But again, generational. That is so excellent, Greg. And, you know, I, I know many members in our community, when they hear the word revenue, their ears perk up a little bit. Um, <laughs> I know that, um, you know, this is such an education um, as we head into the future of what oil and gas and um, hydrogen and um, and water, you know, um, can, can um, or how this interplay is, is actually um, acting. So for those of you in the community who are kind of spinning back to your chemistry class days or those moments when you were like, oh, yeah, methane and hydrogen and um, CO2, all these components, you know, we're talking not just at the um, atomic level, we're talking at the ma- material level. And so let's bring us back to this idea of, well, how uh, was would revenue kind of enter the picture in a way that's about uh, sustainability, in a way that's about um, positive impact, non-invasive techniques. Greg, how will you deploy the funding that you're going to be receiving from Fiscus Funds? Um, I know that many of the folks in our community, um, they're just so excited to start to see the projects that we're um, supporting, but many of them are new to this uh, 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 technological um, area. Um, so help us understand how you're going to deploy that capital um, towards this project and what it's really doing for you in terms of accelerating yourself into um, your, your future plans. Well, first and foremost, it's amazing. And, and I am going to take a minute to talk about Princess. I met Princess in December of this <laughs> past year, and it was an incredible first meeting. And what I heard were amazing things for a project developer. I, like I said, I've been doing this 12 years and um, it has been incredibly challenging to try to find the right partners to move forward with. And uh, Princess, her intellect as well as she, she actually read my, my, my information, which I can't tell you how many meetings I went in and sat down uh, prior to to this and it just did not appear that they even were clue you know had a clue so it was refreshing that princess was not only a great listener and and read what we were doing she yeah i'll i'll quickly say i have an underwriting background and i I, i had written the operating expenses at a certain percentage and i'm like well you know those are actual and you know i'll just leave them in there and princess identified and said you know i think you probably should And, and it was great advice and having that ability to 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 have this, uh, I'll say a consultant almost, but it was so incredible. Just from a, I will say, I am definitely a newbie. Um, I have a general understanding of crypto, but my understanding is how we can make renewable power to mine crypto, and um, that is something that very much excites me. But again, back to 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 what you were talking about, as far as the you know the different verticals that we see as the amazing opportunities are, are oil and gas, um, water treatment, water management, the, the industrial and agricultural waste feedstocks are tremendous opportunities that are literally screaming for help. Uh, you, you probably remember a few years ago when the hurricane hit North Carolina and you had manure lagoons overflowing. And bottom line, people don't like to hear about that kind of stuff in their community. That's not the kind of news you want to make. We are, we can provide solutions for that. But again, the oil and gas is the core of what we're doing right now because we feel that's the transition. That, that is what currently the infrastructure supports. We do not have a hydrogen backbone that can support a hydrogen economy. So we need to grow with that. And the, you know, those are the various verticals that we see, the oil and gas, the the water management, and then uh, future, of course, we would like to deploy the capital to have our own manufacturing facility. And um, we are firm believers that uh, it needs to be an innovative technology center that is almost vocational in, in nature, because we are deploying new technology that will require new skill sets that we're only as good as our labor force. And, you know, we want to make the commitment back into the community to say, hey, let, this technology does no good sitting in our warehouse not being used. It, it needs to be deployed all over the world. And again, we're a global sink. We're not an American sink. We're not a Tennessee sink. We are global. So we we have got to address the problem globally. And, and we feel by taking these steps, we, we really can get there. It's going to 
take strategic, private, public partnerships to get us there, but we can do it. It, it, it can happen. Wonderful, Greg. Wonderful. So I do want to introduce our, our other uh, project developer, and then we're gonna we're gonna kind of uh, talk together amongst our, um, ourselves about exactly how these solutions are coming together. So um, as I introduce uh, the audience to our next um, uh, group um, um, project developer, Greg, you know. Um, at the end of uh, his introduction and, and answering some of these questions, we'll kind of, uh, I have a question for both of you. So hang in there with us. Um, so Bill uh, Potts is joining us, who has had a long career in alternative energy space as a facilitator and business owner, bringing new technologies to the marketplace, raising capital, commercializing new and, and uh, excuse me, inventive uh, technologies and opening up new market opportunities around the world. Most of Bill's uh, efforts have been with uh, startup companies, which has been tremendously challenging at times, but extremely rewarding. His vast network of people and companies allows him to assess markets and needs and how to be most effective in deploying new, these new technologies. Although Bill does not have a science degree, he has a good grasp and deep understanding on energy technology and has worked with and owned companies in many, uh, many different uh, fields from solar uh, photovoltaic and, and solar thermal, to wind technologies, heat and cooling, um, think smart home, uh, low voltage distributions, uh, materials to uh, reduce vehicle emissions, uh, supercharger fuel reduction technologies, carbon and graphene uh, battery technologies, hydrogen fuel cell technologies. I mean, this list just continues to go. Uh, macro uh, gas to liquids um, and uh, 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 my micro mobile uh, liquid natural gas to eliminate flare uh, gas um, emissions and off um, uh, the, the, the flares that you see off the um, wellheads themselves, and then uh, waste plastic to fuel. The main things Bill looks for in technology companies are product uh, viability, cost, time to ROI, and, and carbon offsets. Uh, Greg, I suspect some of a lot of this sounds quite familiar to you as well. This is why Bill has partnered with um, Akashic Technologies, Akashic Technologies is a company that um, is made up of oil and gas industry experts that have come together to bring mobile micro uh, liquid na uh, natural gas uh, technology to combat the ever growing flare gas and gas venting issues that plague the industry. So Bill, I wanna welcome you also to the uh, speaker's stage here. Um, and I just wonder if you could uh, kind of give a little overview of yourself from your voice um, and uh, with regard to Akashic Technologies, your role um, with them. Yes, thank you, Princess. Thank you for having me today. And uh, I've been, um, as Princess said, I've been around the alternative energy space for a long period of time, seen a lot of different technologies and a lot of issues in the marketplace. And I was just listening to Greg in the oil and gas industry. And when I partnered with Akashic, um, their technology uh, is a micro technology that addresses some of the main issues with inside the oil and gas industry, especially the smaller companies where um, they're remote uh, oil wells. And when you drill an oil well, you get gas. And when you're remote, um, the gas they can't uh, do anything with. So what they do is they uh, put it in a pipe and light it on fire and let it uh, burn up in the atmosphere. Um, which is a tremendous issue, as you can imagine, with inside the inside the uh, atmosphere for CO2. It's just it's not being processed or anything. It's just being burned. So, uh, so much so um, is some of the statistics are absolutely staggering how much um, is burned uh, on a daily basis. We burn just in uh, the North Dakota area. We burn uh, 1.5 billion cubic feet per day. Of natural gas wow. and so it's a tremendous waste of gas it's a tremendous uh issue on on co2 and pollution but the hard part is how do you harness it and so akashic has come up with uh, a cryogenic unit which liquefies the natural gas and liquefaction isn't new um but to spend half a billion dollars or more to build a liquefaction plant for these small operations is just not feasible Build pipelines to them all is not feasible. So what Akashic has come up with is a micro unit. They call it a HR unit, which unit which stands for hyd uh, hydrogen recovery unit. And what they do is they deploy that right at the wellhead, 
and they liquefy it. And the, all that natural gas coming out, they liquefy it, they separate it first, they liquefy it in its different components, and then they truck it to where it's needed. And so if you're, uh, for an example, if you're separating the methane out, you can create liquid natural gas, and you can take that to a person that is burning it for um, uh, production of uh, say electricity, or you can take it to cement plants, or you can use it in a number of ways, wherever natural gas is needed. But it stays in a liquefied state and then is and then is reversed back to gas as it's needed. The which is it, it can be um, very lucrative of the process itself. But what they also do, and Greg mentioned about the biggest issues in fracking is is using water. Um, what we're able to do with these micro units is we can take what they call the NGLs, which are natural gas liquids, which is kind of a, a lower end product, it's a byproduct. We can take those liquids and we can actually utilize them in the fracking process without using water. So that way we can absorb them back into the ground without adding any pollution to the ground or any other pollution into the atmosphere. So the technology has had. Um, uh, it's, it's got a tremendous amount of of ability to clean up the environment. Uh, each well, each not each well, but each unit that we deploy uh, can save up if we displace uh, diesel fuel uh, instead of uh, with natural gas. If we uh, get rid of the diesel fuel that's used, use natural gas, we can save up to about 75,000 tons of carbon per year per unit that is deployed. So when I started looking at the technology and seeing the people behind it, it was a tremendous opportunity for this being deployed in the micro units throughout, uh, well, basically, in, we're starting in the Alberta oil sands first and then into the Texas market and North Dakota market and, and then around the world from there. Because it's uh, flare gas and venting gas is, a, is an issue. Um, is worldwide right now that is plaguing us. Uh, but if we can do our little part and start cleaning it up, we can uh, start affecting the environment and um, and wastewater, uh, as I said, with fracking and, and just trying to transform into new energies and new technologies uh, that we're uh, um, trying to deploy throughout the world, actually. So it's that's kind of the basis of the technology. Yes, yeah, and and as you can hear, folks, this is um, this is what we're doing to create some change in the world. Is that we're really addressing this idea of you know really being environmentally conscious and also um, finding some solutions that we want to support that will take us into that seventh generation model that I keep telling folks about. Um, and so I want to kind of open up the conversation between Bill and Greg, Greg and ask this question: How do we bring ESG into the on-chain or blockchain environment in a way that both um, that is both transparent and accessible, but also actually is sustainable. Um, if we can kind of speak to that, I know that uh, many folks in this audience uh, right now they're kind of all distracted by our, our our launch process. But you know, let's let us not forget that all of this not just takes human energy, but it also takes a lot of power to uh, to generate um, these purchases and these um, uh, you know participation uh, moments um, on chain. Um, it's so easy for us to forget that, but um, there is an impact there. So I wonder if, uh, if Greg, you might be able to help Let's us start off. Jump in on that because yeah. obviously um, we, we, we deal and create with waste, uh, waste all the time. And, you know, I, I mentioned briefly jumping into the environmental commodities market and world and, and in, in the basics of any emissions report or study, you always establish a baseline. You always establish a business as usual scenario. And it's very critical to validate and verify all the information that you've got. And, you know, one thing that's very amazing about this community and just, just hearing the last three minutes of, of what he was talking about with Flair is hilarious because it's not hilarious because literally how I get to my house in the Shovelton where our, our pilot oil field is, there's a huge flare. And I can see that flare and I always get lost going, but I can see the flare and it is incredible 
if you just change your perspective and think about every time you see that flare or some kind of steam or some kind of <laughs> off gas, if you will, it's power and, and, and it's, mm. it's going to atmosphere and we are losing that. But the ability to, to validate and verify the actual savings. And again, we don't, we don't handle waste good. We've proven that we pollute horribly, but what we can do if we take it further upstream it is 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 how we we defeat some of these problems and you know what what you're talking about with with the flaring and and the ability to convert some of that to usable is incredible and again it's it's the mindset how do we convert a debt expense to to something that's income producing and that when you think about waste as a resource it's pretty exciting and again the ESGs and the and the the ver validators and verifiers are are critical. Mm -hmm. So I to, uh, this is Bill again. I totally agree with what Greg's saying. It, when I look at the waste marketplace, it's just it's absolutely sickening what uh, what is wasted, what that can be repurposed back in. Especially when you look at the crypto market for mining, crypto mining uses a tremendous amount of energy. Um, we could supply that with waste product, no problem. Uh, it's we don't need to re we don't need to make new energy to do that. We just take the waste product that we're wasting repurpose it, put it back into the marketplace and and we save the the tons and tons, millions of tons of carbon uh, by doing that. And there's lots of innovation innovation out there in the marketplace to be able to do that. And I know uh, you know Greg's got one product, I have another product that we can work together on products. There's a ton of products out in the marketplace that will help us do that and combat um, the this ESG, as far as it comes it back into the um, uh, crypto world, I, I've been getting a very big education on that. So I think it uh, when we when we start looking how we can take those carbon credits that are actual certificates and verify verified, I think we can do a lot with that uh, to um, to build sustainable companies uh, with lots well, of Well, those carbon up. credits are fungible assets and you, they have mm -hmm. some power. Believe it or not, you yeah. won't get a solar rec uh, or a solar project done without the SREX on the front end helping the capital offset. Exactly. Exactly right. And that's what's exciting to me. And I know many of you in the audience, you know, you're I'm super excited about the profits that can be gained in these types of um, communities. But when we actually know that in, in Fiscus, what make, what separates us from all the competition that's out there is that we look at projects like these. We look at the infrastructural environment, uh, the material environment, um, to see how we can actually generate not only the profits that can help to motivate us um, in the crypto space, but also um, knowing that we're actually pr um, problem solving um, towards a sustainable long-term solution. I keep telling folks, um, that I myself am a, a buy and hold investor. And so I, I don't treat my portfolios any differently. I look for companies that are going to take us not just through a seven year pro forma, but to take us through to generational um, advances that we can um, involve not only current uh, sustainable leaders who've been you know at this for uh, many years, but to also bring uh, young people who are going to eventually take up the leadership roles um, to take us into the 22nd century at the, at the very least. So, you know, th this is all very uh, much a dynamic that we're seeing. Um, many, many, uh, you know, um, companies that are involved in um, doing capital raises for com uh, for uh, project developers um, are either ESG or not, um, but they don't really blend this all chain experience for the greatest um, opportunities for the communities itself. Um, and so that's what many of us here in Fisk, uh, uh, the Fiscus community are really getting um, some benefit from. And I want us to kind of re kind of pull the, the curtain back a little bit, look beyond the gas a little and see exactly how can we support uh, these kinds of uh, projects. This is the way. This is one of the ways, at, at the very least, to do so. Um, I would so love that's to jump in real quick and, yeah, and, and say, please. Princess, what you are doing with this community is actually creating a marketplace. I heard mm -hmm. Bill and talk about hydrogen, and, and it excites me. I want more partners. There needs to be as much technology thrown as we can deploy. Part of the problem, we've got great technology that's sitting in labs, but it doesn't have cash to mm -hmm. get it on the streets mm -hmm. and actually working. Inventions are great, 
get them in the street and make them work. And, and that is how we deploy and that's how we change. And I just think this marketplace and this community is the most incredible dynamic offering that, that a project developer could encounter. It's, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, and in traditional banking too is they're, they're risk adverse and new technology has some risk to it, but it also has some incredible advantages to it. And most of the, the banking world does not understand. They might understand a little bit of financing, but they do not understand how to deploy new technologies in a marketplace that can, that can have uh, immediate revenue streams coming off of them, which, which amazes me all the time. When I start first talking to uh, princess, I was like, okay, I'm amazed. This is, this is where we need to be going. Um, you know, in that, on-chain world of of new banking rules and new banking systems that uh, that takes the handcuffs off of 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 entrepreneurs that have products that actually have real real world solving solutions and that's what that's what princess i just want to to your own horn that's what i was amazed about about hearing how fiscus and how this is uh, could advance technologies uh that i've seen for a long period of time that they're just sit on the shelves and die and so it's it's a very exciting time and a very exciting how these two worlds are merging um, of the, from the banking to the technology. Everybody wants to go green. Everybody says, hey, we need to go and um, buy electric cars. Um, our infrastructure can't support that, period. If I heard a, a, a while back, if you went on one uh, if you try to charge 1,500 electric cars all at the same time, you blow the power grid. So it's, we don't we I, I do love not have story. a Think about if yeah. you come home one night and Jim and Sally have two new Teslas in their driveway, and then you look across, there's a Dodge Volt, there's a Ford Lightning, and then all of a sudden you start doing the math, and you're not going to be able to turn on your stove to cook because you've got a brownout because everybody's charging <laughs> their car. It's it, a little it, bit of an issue. Yeah, exactly right. And I've heard from top experts where – you know, the, the, it's so much just in to charge 25 cars with inside of a a, a block uh, of, around your home is impossible. We do not have the <laughs> we do not have the infrastructure to do that. And everybody wants green. Everybody wants electricity. And I get it and I understand it. But fossil fuels right now um, is where we're at. But we need to use it better. We need to we need we need to take the waste that has been happening for eons and change it into usable products and i think that's yep. where the technologies are there and we we have the technology it's not that's not an issue we just need the will of people to actually push it forward and push it together but i don't want so people to get frustrated with ev though it will happen it just well, takes definitely. a little bit more development and, and it is generational as princess has said it's not going to be a flip the switch and it will happen over time when we have better batteries i mean I'd like to mention this real quick because it's amazing. But yeah, I, I've we've heard of some technology and been a part of. Um, think about if you had materials that actually held charges in certain types of, well, for example, the road, and you could actually have a battery as it drove down the road. It was charging while it was connecting with the materials in the asphalt. Obviously, a tremendous uh, infrastructure, you know, trillions of dollars to do that. But again, think about it. Why wouldn't that work? Why couldn't you have a battery that reacts with materials in asphalt that charges it as you go? There's all kinds of things that will happen. EV will happen. It just needs to, to continue. Exactly, exactly. Well, I really appreciate this conversation, and I hope that the rest of the community um, uh, you know, we can engage with uh, Greg and Bill about the, their ideas um, and um, really understand some of these uh, mechanisms. You know, uh, one of my strives as a, a project financer is really not only to get the funds out to these uh, types of uh, project developers, but really educate uh, the communities that support um, this kind of uh, mobility of, of um, assets into this type of environment. And so I encourage uh, folks to really engage with these two project developers and others that we start to bring into our network, um, because this is really, uh, again, it's, it really is part of that future uh, solution. Uh, I, I, I can't identify that many groups in, in the uh, crypto market space that's really taking on that commitment to ed educate their community, not just, uh, you know, create um, profit generating communities and, and um 
uh, you know, not really getting into the, um, the, the, the weeds of what we're actually saying here. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, again, thank our um, project developers for just, again, enlightening us on, on exactly some of the specifics that are going on. I think this also helps to expose why we choose companies that have strong developers that have been sitting on these types of solutions for years and now are getting a breakthrough because we can actually finance them. We can do it in a way that's uh, uh, you know, um, approachable for them. We can do it in a way that's also um, dynamic for the investing community. Um, so I, I, again, I just want to thank both of you for not only your, your previous efforts in, in the, these industries, but also just for your presence today, because this is the type of education that we all have to be keeping up on, especially if we're going to sit here and pay these gas prices on, um, on the crypto and on, on chain environment. We have to be aware of exactly the impact that we're, we're creating. So um, at this point, I, I, I would like us to kind of transition. I know that the community is so thrilled and excited right now. Um, some folks are really nervous, wondering where, where is Fiscus going? How are we getting through the LBP process? So I'd like to kind of flip it back to Phil so that we can get to this kind of exciting uh, announcements that are coming up and um, sort of the updates that um, have brought us to this point in our, our journey. And, and Greg and Bill, I just want you to know we are so excited to be funding you and um, getting you into our queue for distribution. Um, I know that the community has heard from me several times. Not only am I excited about our token launch, but I'm a very excited excited about getting these funds distributed into our marketplace and to know that I can actually look at a community of people who support what's going on. So thank, well, thank you again. You. Yep. And um, thank I'll th much. throw it back to Phil. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. Thank you, Princess. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Greg. Uh, these projects are, are projects that will truly make a difference. They're projects that are, that are long term. Uh, again, those that, that know Fiscus, and if you don't know, if this is your first time here, uh, we're geared towards the long term. Uh, let, let's not pull any punches about that. We absolutely are. We have so many structures that we've built in into the mechanics of Fiscus from the very beginning, uh, even including the LBP. And let's, let's talk on that. Yes, the LBP, it's happening right now. Yes, the the, the larger buyers are, are, are going to get a great price, right? Because of the mechanics of how the LBP works. But make no qualms about it. Uh, the LBP was not required. It was not required for us to do. It is, it is not required from a, from a structural standpoint. Uh, we, we will use it in the future for other elements and mechanisms. We'll use some of the data and the metrics that we get from this LBP uh, for things that we're going to be doing in the future. Uh, for right now, it is a great mechanism uh, to see where, where we're at as far as how the market views us. But pull, pull no punches. Again, we are here for projects. Uh, those that know the long-term vision, it is about the projects. The LBP does not make or break us one bit, uh, one bit at all. And so on that, there's some other, some other updates that, that we'll get into here very shortly. Uh, there's some adjustments that we'll make as far as kind of a structural uh, with even the, the Fiscus Friday, because as we get into more and more projects, and this is something that, that uh, the, the princess may, may not wanted to say yet, there are so many projects that want to come to here to Fiscus Friday to educate about their projects, about what they have going on, that we really will have almost a separate segment of, of a project developer panel uh, so that everyone can, can fully know that. You know, that's that's something that's been planned based on our growth. And so we're excited about that. But let's hear right now about operational, about marketing, about compliance. And then uh, then I'll definitely speak on, I think, one of the most exciting announcements for today. Uh, on top of the fact that, yes, uh, LBP will be ramping up. You guys will see the additional buyers there. They're just getting a great price. Uh, but we'll talk about the gratitude announcement uh, towards the end of this. But for now, we'll turn it over to Kevin and Kyle. Perfect, thanks, Phil. Um, thank you for having me on another wonderful Fiscus Friday. My name is Kevin, but you guys already know that. Um, what you might not, what may not know is that I'm a big sports fan. And right now in sports for us, we have March Madness, the biggest college basketball tournament in the world. 
And as I'm tuning into the community, I'm seeing a bit of a March Madness in Fiscus itself. So I just wanted to reassure everyone, like Phil said, this is a long-term project. Um, the goals have always been long-term. You hear Princess talk about seven generations ahead. You hear uh, all the plans being being happening off-chain and on-chain, and that's what I'm here to do and update you about today. So the first thing I wanted to address was the marketing. Um, there's been some concern in the community about the marketing. Um, so I wanted to let you guys know that we have been ramping up marketing efforts. We have now signed 15 influencers that combined for, for a total of over 9.7 million followers combined between them. And the minimum campaign length is at least one week with um, getting as high as 10 days. So this is all to support our launch to get Fiscus name out there. And we're going to do a huge blast. So watch for that in the incoming week. We're already, um, we're already in talk with these influencers. They've agreed. I'm going to drop a few names to tease you guys. Names like Crypto Nina, Caroline Crypto, Clarissa York. Uh, Mark Goody, those are just some names that I can drop to uh, kind of tease you guys there. But we have 15 influencers now um, with a total of 9.7 million followers that are going to be tweeting daily about Fiscus, engaging with the community, making videos. So expect a blast coming up real soon. Um, in terms of the operations side with compliance, we have our legal guild building out our compliance framework as we speak. So we should expect that coming within the next few weeks. And that'll be really important for us to get before launch to ensure, again, that we cross our T's and dot our I's and our compliance framework is in place. Um, additionally, on the dev side, we're still working hard on both the contracts and the, the um, uh, UX, UI of the launch. And we, we're working parallel in a, in a really well communication in terms of, of our team effort. And we're working hard towards that launch to make that date. So with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Kyle, who's going to explain a little bit more about our marketing. Sounds good. Thanks, Kevin. I always hate speaking after you because you got such an energy. And, and for myself, I, I feel like I, I'm a bit more muted. But um, here we go. Uh, so as you mentioned, you know, I know there was a, a lot of uh, chatter in and around uh, marketing. And, you know, I wanted to sort of speak to our general approach or our team's general approach. So, you know, Tiago, he's our marketing manager. He effectively, um, uh, his focus is on, on building the community. And so, again, building the community first, ensuring that people know about us, uh, they know what the project's about, and, and again, bringing them into uh, primarily Discord. because That's where we have most of our discussions. And so, you know, one of the things there is we've got to understand that people come from all walks of life. You know, some people understand crypto. Some people uh, want to get into uh into it, some people who simply just want financial freedom. So, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever situation, uh, you know, whatever walk of life people come from, um, our primary focus is to nurture this and nurture our mandates, um, you know, pretty much in, in how we serve the community and how we support the community and what it's all about. I mean, that's that's core, that's focus, that's something that we can't, you know, lose sight of. So in other words, you know, we aren't reactionary. We aren't um, you know, we aren't responding simply to, you know, a couple of people that want to see more action. What we're doing is we're trying to build a bigger vision. And so sometimes, you know, we find ourselves wanting to to be bigger than we are. We're wanting to to run before we walk. But again, we got to keep our eye on the, uh, on the bigger vision and, and build responsibly. So, you know, again, going through uh, the discussions and, you know, for me, I find it uh, intriguing. I find it very interesting. Some of the things that we talk about and some of the concerns people have, and that's that's usually where I put a, a bit of focus. So, you know, there's been discussion around, you know, maintaining a floor. And in my opinion, you know, and I'm speaking to the LBP. So in my opinion, you know, you, you want to have a realistic floor. And if you prop it up, well, you know, you kind of set yourself up for failure. So when it comes to anything, I think, financially related, and it's a very intimate subject, I find that, you know, we're also, you know, as people, we, we generally tie an emotion to it. And usually it's, you know, half when we have it, it's regret when we don't, it's uh, fear when it's deployed, uh, and so on and so forth. So for me, you know, it's kind of interesting to observe, you know, how we navigate through these emotions as we're sort of in a building phase. Um, for me as an investor in anything, I like to establish expectations for myself. And so, you know, this helps me manage my own sanity. For example, um, I see and I know 
what's being built here. So I run my own risk analysis and then uh, invest sort of accordingly to that. Um, in other essence, you know, I, I sort of build my own risk tolerance. So, you know, in doing that, I manage my own expectations. I don't drive myself insane on fluctuations between now and what uh, my next measurement marker is. I just, you know, remain, um, remain composed, right? So the core takeaway that I'd like you to have here is that we're in a building phase. We've seen and heard from some amazing projects in the Fiscus portfolio, and we've seen um, sort of an amazing financial model that's put forth by Phil and Princess. So, um, you know, this is what supports my confidence in the project, and and I'm proud to seeing the project move forward. I'm seeing, you know, the core team and, and the admins and the community itself just, you know, come together and, and support uh, what we're building here. Um, so in any event, getting back to sort of the marketing, you know, we're not necessarily looking to bring in eyeballs for a short term spike. I think some people are wanting to see that, but that's just not the case. You know, this would be artificial and it isn't really a strong way to establish a foundation. You know, the LBP is all about baselining and then you build up from there. You know, and when you do that, you know, you set a framework that's, uh, you know, that's built for sustainable growth. So kind of getting back to, you know, today's AMA a little bit, because again, you know, on the note of excitement and emotion, I know that, you know, we get amped up coming into the AMA and, uh, you know, it's been a week since we've, we've talked or sat down and, you know, users like, uh, there's a couple of them, I think uh, Labs was one of them that I was reading about, you know, seems to want to hear more about project updates before off-chain projects. So I kind of get that. And, you know, a, a takeaway from this will be, you know, just taking that feedback and discussing with that, that with the team and seeing if we can, uh, you know, improve our agendas and, and see if we can kind of accommodate. But, you know, the off-chain projects are very important. I mean, these projects are what helps build, you know, your returns. Um, you know, if you find yourself disengaged during the updates, well, you know, kind of ask yourself, how am I going to get to the moon without a mechanism? You know, these off-chain projects are a key component to your mechanism, right? They're I don't know. They're they're part of our proverbial spaceship, right? So keep keep that in mind when we hear from the speakers, because again, if we don't necessarily understand the projects, if they're out of our comfort zone or our knowledge base, um, let's try to understand that, or let's talk about that, because these projects again, um, they form you know our success, our returns. So we should take an active interest. Uh, if we mindlessly want to throw our money into an investment and and let it grow, then absolutely. But then we sort of eliminate the, um, uh, you know, the the criticism that we have for it. It's just you know it's a set it or forget it mentality, and that's okay too. Um, from you know moving to sort of a, a dev standpoint, moving off of marketing and projects in general, um, you know, as a dev update. Recently, we did experience some delays, and so we were kind of concerned that we might be off schedule. But you know, fortunately, we've got resources. You know, our internal dev team we're, we're quite deep, so we've added uh, another one, and we've got another uh, another one programmer, and we've got another one in the hopper if we need to, uh, just to ensure that we meet our timelines. Um, so, I mean, that's that's kind of your update there, just to you know provide a bit of transparency. Um, there isn't a concern on timelines; it's just again we had to backfill. Um, what else can I update you with? I think those were those were some of my core points. I really didn't see too many people uh, DM me or send me any other uh, updates or update requests, but um, those are the key points I had to speak with. Um, Kevin, back to you or Phil. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you for that perspective as well. Uh, I, th I think that this is probably a, as good a time as any uh, for the gratitude announcement, this is something that has been planned uh, from the very inception of Fiscus. Uh, it's something that we noticed in other other profiles. You know, when when we talk about and those that are maybe maybe nerds like myself, when we talk about the Borg mentality, right? Taking a Star Trek reference in that assimilation, you know, we we look at in in pre, in the creation of Fiscus and specifically of the Fisk token the best elements of, of what has been done in crypto. Because why reinvent the wheel when it comes to that? We are already changing crypto in bringing off-chain and project finance into the sphere 
of on chain and of and of of crypto in the way that we're doing it. And so when we're looking at these other elements, one element that we did want to bring in, this is the the best time to announce this, is pre-launch rebasing. Now we're not going to do it like some others have done via via Crucible uh, or or something of that nature. Uh, for us, it's it's much simpler because again we have we have swaps coming pre-launch, both a swap of PFISC and a swap of WPFISC for LBP participants, uh, and we know that LBP is still going on, but we're still going to make this announcement now so that everyone has the most and most recent information. And so what, what does that look like when we talk about pre-launch rebasing? This is what it means. And we'll make a formal announcement about this. And I know that, that there will be tweets going out about this as well. Um, holders of PFISC will receive the initial staking APY as of 2 p.m. UTC on March 3rd. Holders of WPFISC will receive the initial staking APY as of 2 p.m. on March 19th. What that does is that allows you to benefit from this weight. Uh, the, the project that comes to mind, I think probably the most, maybe not the most famous, you guys probably know of some others, uh, but I think of, of, of Clima uh, in, in their use and obviously the use of, of, of a crucible. For us, it's a lot easier. When you get to the point of swapping, it won't just be a one-for-one -one swap. It'll be a one for one point, uh, whatever that, that math comes out to based on that day of swap. Uh, this is in, in gratitude. It's a way for us to show gratitude for whitelisters, for NFT holders with their token allocations, for LBP participants. Uh, we are excited and, and thrilled about this. And by doing this pre-launch, uh, this, again, it allows us to, to show you how, how thankful we are that you are in this community. When it comes to uh, projects and those that support the projects, uh, that is what we are here for. We're here to support the projects long term, right? That is the vision of Fiscus is long term. Therefore, if, if the project aspect isn't for you, perhaps Fiscus is not for you. I, I would be as bold as to say that. This is vital. This is what we do. Uh, we are utility. Fiscus is utility. And the utility that we have, funding projects, because there is a need. Uh, and we are thrilled to be able to meet that need. So excited about that. We'll make that, uh, we'll formalize that via full announcements. So everyone has that and has the understandings of that and, and knows where we're going to go from here. Uh, we'll, we'll happily watch this, this LBP conclude uh, as, we, as we go about the next few hours. The additional participants we know will be participating based on the price, of course. Uh, those uh, AMA questions that were centered around that. Most of those have been answered. I think maybe one or two that we'll answer here immediately uh, after here this AMA. And, and we look forward to constantly growing. And, and we thank everyone for your attention, for your growth, for your resources. Uh, those that are in the community day in and day out, uh, that is not lost upon us. Uh, we are here to engage with you. We're here to educate you. We're here to continually grow and learn ourselves. The, the most exciting thing about DeFi and about crypto is that the pace of it, the scale of it is so fast. Uh, we've, we've even seen there's a couple of the LVP participants that they, they really wanted to come in on, on quarter one, that first part of the LVP. That's what was more or less discussed. They had issues. They're new to crypto. They had issues getting their USDC on Polygon, getting USDC, period. Uh, and then getting it on Polygon, you know, they didn't they didn't understand that, you know, there could be delays in them uh, in them going from fiat to crypto. And so in that education, that's what we're here for. We're here to support them. We're here to support all projects. We're here to support our community. And so with that, I would love to turn it back over to actually before we do that, uh, I do believe that Donnie may have an announcement as well. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. Um, just a small announcement. Um, as many of you may have known and, and I've spoke of before, uh, we are working on uh, developing the AVAX version of the NFTs. 
and uh, with the uh, collaboration between uh, Don Alley, our uh, resident creative, and um, uh, RPWS, our uh, uh, amazing creative admin, um, we've uh, we've going to give uh, the community a sneak peek of this, um, the aesthetics of it. Um, uh, later tonight in the announcement section. I think RPWS will will uh, make the announcement in the announcement channel and uh, you'll be able to uh, see the new aesthetics. It's uh, we're just going to post the one, um, but just imagine that the, the other two will have different colors. Um, and then and, and uh, certainly we've got future use uh, of uh, other NFTs um, the, that we're considering. But uh, the, obviously the uh, the AVAX, the Polygon slash uh, Ethereum um, transformation to AVAX will happen post launch, um, but at least you'll get a, a, a sneak preview of the aesthetics of it. Um, so that's really all I have. We're working behind the scenes on that um, and uh, and focusing um, on uh, on that. But we love to give the community a sneak peek of that uh, later in the announcements channel. Back to you, Phil. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Donnie. And I have, I've been able to to see the uh, the new NFTs, and they are, they're stunning. They're absolutely stunning. So I'm I'm excited for the community to see those as well. Uh, we have definitive agreements being drafted as well for those first the projects all inside of the of the first cycle. So I know that's exciting. Uh, and I, I think there's probably one, perhaps two of those would be available uh, to the community, depending on the disclosures there. Um, and so, again, we, we're in a great place. We're moving forward. Uh, the, the benefit of, of, of Fiscus is that, you know, by, by being based in utility and being based in, in off-chain and bringing that on-chain, it gives us such great mobility in the things we're able to do. The things that are normally important uh, for typical on-chain projects that don't have utility, that don't have sources of revenue, uh, you know, they they are in an entirely different place than we are. And so that's to our advantage. That's to our benefit. What's required that's different for us than maybe some others? Additional patience, you know, understanding, uh, really knowing where we're headed. And so we're here continually to help everyone with that, to be able to show and not just tell. And so with that, I would definitely like to turn it over to Kevin to take us out. Thank you so much, Phil. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for attending another successful Viscous Friday. This concludes our event. Have a wonderful, relaxing weekend. Have a beer for me and Viscous out. <laughs>